Okay, the next thing we did was uh, attach the saddle where it's going to be in its permanent position, the, uh, the front saddle anyway. Um, some of the key points of this are um, that it does go right in front of the uh, right in front of the king post <clears throat> and um, this is a really a really critical point you want this to be level in all directions and perpendicular to the uh, the deck rails of the jig itself um, the first alignment thing we did um, was to just clamp it to the king post itself right here like my hand is pulling it in forcing it to be perpendicular to the face of this which is important and also check that it's uh, square to the deck rails themselves um, in order to get the uh, the position this way um, we used a little tool that we have here which is basically just a short piece of this uh, 2 by 3 uh, square tubing and <clears throat> as you can see here it's got a, a fine scribed center line which uh, basically indicates the exact middle between these two deck rails which is where this uh, wants to end up because you don't want your bottom rails of your frame uh, obviously being not in line with everything else <coughs> and we went ahead and scribed a little line I don't know if you, yeah, you can see that um, on the saddle itself and just lined the two up and uh, that gave us our alignment there um, also like we I showed you earlier there's a clamp on the bottom of this uh, bolt goes down through and uh, clamps beneath which pulls it down flat with the uh, deck rails which we know are level because we checked that earlier um, and the last thing we did in order to uh, secure the position of this is uh, use a couple tabs to uh, ensure alignment um, these two in the front basically hold it in place to where if anything were to get jarred it wouldn't fluctuate from its position where it is right now as far as front to back and also we added a tab um, on the side here to where when you put this in you can slide it all the way against that tab and it will um, line up the saddle where it is right now um, after the center line indicator is removed um, as you can see on this side we didn't put a uh, an angle bracket underneath um, for one main reason is that once you have all the motor fixturing and everything in here it does come within close contact of this uh, this whole saddle and, and for whatever case um, we've run into before this may need to come out um, before you remove everything else or it just might not be possible so therefore we only add one <coughs> uh, bracket to this side that way if it does come uh, to a point to where uh, the saddle is, would be pinned in had it been secured on both sides we can uh, simply uh, undo the bolt and tap it out this way slide it out okay the uh, next thing we're going to be doing is making a set of cones like you see here um, for a jig um, what these cones do is uh, pin the neck uh, in between the uh, the two cones in order to uh, hold it steady and square and plumb uh, during the build. Um, what we start off with is some 2 inch OD just plain steel stock um, cut to 2 inches long and uh, what we're going to do is end up uh, drilling and reaming the uh, center hole for the uh, rod to go through uh, that holds them onto the jig and then make the taper on each one that uh, fits into the OD or I'm sorry the ID of the uh, the neck in order to uh, hold it square to the jig and as you can see here I've just got it uh, jigged up in the lathe right now and what we're going to do is first drill a, uh, a through hole starting with the center drill um, and then just slowly step drilling it up probably Oh, an eighth or so at a time until we get um, just under one inch and then I'll ream the final hole. The next step is to use the dial indicator to make sure that I have the uh, the stock set inside the chuck um, perfectly square. Um, and the main concern with that is you want the 
the through hole to be concentric with the taper you're going to turn on the outside and if we look at the dial here spin it around and I'm only moving about oh maybe a thousandth of an inch over the whole uh, turn um, and a lot of that probably accounts for maybe just a bit of an uneven surface on the, uh, the raw material which will work fine um, so what we'll do is go ahead and turn off the taper and um, do that for for both cones and uh, once that's done we will uh, put a set screw in it to hold it onto the rod and that'll be it okay here's what uh, what the finished cone set looks like um, as you can see it came out pretty nice um, with the set screw in them and everything um, and uh, here's kind of an example of what it would look like uh, in the jig um, as you can see I just kind of have a scrap neck in here right now um, and usually what we do when we're setting this up is you can set up all your uh, all your dimensions and all your specs um, uh, by using the actual fixture then you put your cones on and uh, uh, put the net, put the bottom cone on, put the neck on put the top cone on and pound it down into place as you're tightening the set screw that way the neck is uh, secured and won't move around and will be uh, perfectly square and plumb in your whole jig which is uh... alright the next part we're making is a uh, forward control boss fixture um, what this does is uh, gives us um, the proper positioning both uh, height and uh, alignment um, meaning level and uh, perpendicular to the frame um, for our forward control bosses um, this is actually a, a finished one that we use in our jig here at the shop and um, I've made up some of the uh, basic components here um, for this bottom brace here I didn't have any more of this stock so we're just going to use some one by two and uh, stack them on top of each other weld them together and uh, use that as basically this part um, this piece is uh, for this bottom box and um, that doesn't really have to be a, an incredibly accurate um, measurement simply just because it's going to use as a uh, a jam down into the frame um, and then the two uprights that we're using this uh, uh, three quarter by two inch solid stock um, that are going to be drilled to match up with our uh, four control bosses if you see over here I've got one in the vise and what I did was just take a four control boss that would end up being welded to the frame and uh, bolted it or not bolted it but clamped it onto a, a piece of the stock and all I'll do in order to get the position is just transfer punch uh, the three holes and uh, put it in the mill um, level everything up drill those three holes and um, once that's done on both right and left we'll just uh, jig everything up together and weld it um, 